Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry for the upload, it's pretty late. I've been quite busy today. If you look at my Instagram, you can see why. <laughs> Little plug there. But yeah, I've been pretty busy today. So again, sorry for the late upload. But I'm wanting to do the reactions consistently. I'm like, telling myself I'm going to be posting every day or every day, bar one day here and there. But yeah, this is one that... It's a topic that I'm like, I know, but I don't know much about it. So it's why Korea split up into North and South Korea. And I have a feeling it's to do with, um, like, the, the I swear it's the same thing as, like, Vietnam. Like, I think it was after, Vietnam was actually after, but, like, how one side was, like, communist, one side was the other one. I think it was, what the term is. Capitalist, not capitalist, is oh, it is cap capitalist. It actually says in the comment. But, um... I think it's like the Russia or the USSR against the US, but again, I'm not too sure. And I'm assuming North Korea is the USSR, South Korea is um, the US, from what I've read and from what I've seen. But I might be a bit off with that, but I don't know the full backstory. I don't know why it actually happened in the first place. And I'm just interested in learning, like, sort of. And again, this is seven years ago, so things probably have changed from this video, but. I'm still interested in seeing this video and just seeing and learning about this situation because it is a big, like big situation, a big. It's just a big thing in the world, even to this day. Like especially with North Korea, it's one of those countries that people aren't very familiar with. They're quite sort of secretive with what they do, and they quite are like. They're just, or they say they, the leaders of that country are just strange and just weird with what they do. Hopefully, no one from North Korea, none of none of the um, people in charge, are seeing this video because. <laughs> You never know what could happen to me. They're probably going to be tracking my IP address. IP address. But now, nah, let's get into this one and see what this video has to tell me. And yeah, like I said at the start, links to my Instagram in the description, links to my Twitter in the description, and links to my second channel in the description for those interested and want to follow me or subscribe to my second channel. Links are all there. But let's get into this one. Let's see what um, this channel has to offer. I really do enjoy this channel so far. Some of the videos are so, so interesting. Have you ever wondered why there's North Korea <laughs> and South Korea? Ever wondered what happened to, you know, Korea? Like most geopolitical changes in the world, what year the division of Korea was the result of war. The Korean War took place from 1950 to 1953, but it's it wasn't 50. really the Korean War that split the country. The Korean War just made the split more permanent, but it was already split. We need to look not only at the Korean War, but look at the bigger picture. The split had more to oh, do so with the Korean kind of War actually linked to the Vietnam War then. Soviet War in Afghanistan. Cold War. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. So it's all linked from the Cold War. Maybe it did touch upon that in the Cold War video I did. I can't fully remember. The Cold War is interesting as it wasn't so much a war in the traditional sense. The Cold War was effectively a war of wars. The Cold War was primarily between the United States and the Soviet Union, but in a more broad sense it was effectively an ideological war between capitalism and communism. The US and the USSR never actually fought each other in direct battle, but instead fought each other indirectly through proxy wars. One example would be the Vietnam War. The United States, who were helping South Vietnam, were at war with communist North Vietnam, while the Soviets provided them with tanks, aircraft and weapons, as well as billions of dollars in funding. That Another is so messed up when you think about it. The Soviet war in Afghanistan. The Soviets fought with the communist Afghan government, while the United States gave $3 billion and funded to the Mujahideen to fight in the civil war. We know about that However, one. <laughs> this turned out to be a horrible decision for mm -hmm. the US, as one of the leaders of the Mujahideen turned out to be one Osama bin Laden, who later went on to form Al-Qaeda, who later went on to declare war on the United States. So in a roundabout <laughs> way, the US effectively funded terrorism against themselves. But back to Korea. The Korean War is effectively <laughs> another one of these proxy wars as part of the Cold War. But the split Korea happened even before the Cold War. The country was actually split at the end of World War II. Oh, if shit. you've seen my first video, I talked about how Japan surrendered in World War II and had to give up land that they had acquired via force by signing the Potsdam Declaration, which included Taiwan. As well as Taiwan though, Japan also had control of the entire Korean Peninsula which really? the Japanese Empire had annexed in 1910 from the Korean Empire. The Japanese ruled Korea for 35 years before the surrender. But this is different from the situation with Taiwan. Taiwan's an island which made up a tiny amount of the Republic of China's land, so it's simply a case of handing sovereignty over to China. But with Korea, Japan took all of their land, so the Korean Empire had effectively been wiped off the map. 
Therefore, by order of the United Nations, Korea was to be temporarily split at the 38th parallel. The Soviet Union were to control the North while the United States controlled the South, with a plan to unite the country in time. A bit of a plan to unite the country in time. Fucking what? It's 80 years later, it's still not united. That is... <clears throat> just shows you what the world's like, man. That is so messed up. And this is the saddest thing about this is that so many families were split up. Like, I've not actually truly looked into the stories, but I know there's some really, really, like, sad, devastating stories, even to this day, where it's still happening, where families just aren't able to see each other. And it's just so fucking messed up. Like, when you truly think about it, it's just mental. It's important to note that at this point, the US and the USSR were allies at this time, although they didn't exactly trust oh, each other. Oh, shit. The United Nations scheduled elections in both parts of they Korea. Were like, they were to be fair terms. and democratic. In the South, Syngman Rhee was elected and the Republic of Korea was established, taking control over from the US military. However, in the North, the Soviet Union refused to hold free elections and a communist state was established with Kim Il-sung as the leader of the country, grandfather of the current North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un. By 1949, all US and Soviet forces had withdrawn from Korea. The Soviets and Communist China had significantly armed the North Koreans with weapons and funding. The US, on the other hand, they weren't quite so generous with the South Koreans and refused to even give them any tanks. The so you're telling me there was a point where North Korea were much more powerful than South Korea? Because to this point, I know North Korea is a, pr it's a struggling country to say the least, and South Korea is like one of the richest countries in the world. Crazy how things can change, right? Crazy. And they didn't get the sort of support as North Korea Leaving got. Them seriously ill-equipped for a war. And war is exactly what happened. In 1950, under the direction of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, North Korea crossed the 38th parallel and invaded South Korea. Stalin didn't expect the US to get involved since he had already withdrawn all of their troops and they didn't intervene in the victory of Communist China and the Chinese Civil War in the previous year. However, well, my dog was barking a lot, so I paused the video <laughs> and I'm going to just go back a little bit. I don't know what point we were at, but yeah, apologies <laughs> for that. <laughs> And they didn't intervene in the victory of Communist China and the Chinese Civil War in the previous year. Okay, I do However, the UN actually. Security Council unanimously voted to intervene in Korea. Ironically though, the Soviet Union was part of the UN Security Council's Big Five and had veto power. Unfortunately for them, they weren't there to veto the resolution. See, even though Communist China had effectively won the Civil War and had total control of the mainland, the Republic of China, who only had control of Taiwan, still held the seat of China at the UN. In protest of this, what? the Soviet Union boycotted all UN meetings. So the UN oh, intervened wow, to that is a, Such a small island compared to such a big island had more control. That is Korea, wild. Although it's mostly US forces. The troops were led by the United States under the command of General MacArthur. Stalin promised to help North Korea as much as possible, however, he insisted that Soviet forces would not engage in combat with US forces. But why is this, you might wonder. I mean, why engage in all these proxy wars and indirect fighting? Why don't the United States and Soviet Union just fight each other directly? It's to promote the... Well, the answer to that can be summed up thingy. in three words. Oh. Mutually assured destruction. That's, by that they mean, okay, I was off off what I was saying. I was just thinking, I forgot what I was thinking, I completely forgot. But I'm guessing this is to do with, um, not atomic bombs, what are they called? I forget what they're called, um, chemical weapons, etc. See, at the time, the US and the USSR were considered the two superpowers <coughs> of the world, and the consequences of both superpowers at all at war with each other yep. would have had catastrophic repercussions. As well as being superpowers, they were also both nuclear weapon states. That's the one. See, in the weapons. early 40s, the US, with the help of the UK and Canada, worked on the Manhattan Project, which is basically codenamed for developing an atomic bomb. It's a slightly more conspicuous name. In 1945, the US showed the sheer destructive power of these weapons when they dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After seeing this, the Soviet Union significantly increased their own research into nuclear weapons and, in 1949, they successfully tested their own atomic bomb. So war between the United States and the Soviet Union would have inevitably ended in World War III and, for the mm -hmm. first time, nuclear war. This wouldn't have just been bad for the US and Russia, but absolutely, literally, everyone. everyone. <laughs> and could have quite easily led to the end of human civilization. But thankfully that didn't happen. 
Joseph Stalin was fully aware of the potential consequences of engaging in combat with US forces. Say what you want about Joseph Stalin, but at least he was smart enough not to go to war with the US. Hmm. Credit where credit's due, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Give me credit to someone like Joseph Stalin, fuck's sake. Never yeah, thank you, Stalin, I appreciate it. My life is all down to you. By September 1950, North Korea had South Korea <laughs> cornered in the Pusan perimeter oh, and a wow. communist victory looked imminent. What the fuck? The North Koreans had to send supplies to their soldiers on the front line, which General MacArthur thought he could exploit. Instead of trying to break through with ground forces, the US used their navy to flank the North Koreans. They took back control of the city of Seoul and managed to disrupt the North Korean supply line. Oh wow. Within just a few months, things had completely changed and it now looked like South Korea was- But that just, just shows the power of the US now, but also back then, like, they can just change something within months. That is crazy, man. Victory. However, at this point, China, who had thus far not been involved, marched their troops across the border and pushed the UN forces back to the 38th parallel. Control of the peninsula fluctuated for a while around the 38th parallel. Ironically, control ended very similar to what it had been to begin with. In 1953, North and South Korea signed an armistice agreement creating a de facto international border. It's worth noting that an armistice agreement is not a peace treaty, so technically speaking they're actually still at war. After the agreement, both oh, sides shit. built barriers to stop each other from crossing the border, <laughs> and there's now a 4 kilometer wide demilitarised zone. Which is a somewhat Throughout ironic whole, thing given it's the single most militarised border in the, the entire whole world. Country, both countries. Speaking of ironic, and there's now a 4 kilometer wide demilitarised zone. Which is a somewhat ironic name given it's the single most militarised border in the entire world. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of strange, isn't it? Speaking of ironic names, <laughs> North Korea's official name is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Which is ironic since several organisations have ranked North Korea as the single least democratic country in the entire world. <laughs> and the good thing about... That is so messed up, man. I shouldn't laugh, but it just is funny how that's their name and it's just the total opposite of what it Talking actually about is, North man. Korea is... No one but our countries like... Syria, like just Congo, Iran, Guinea, like Guinea Bissau, Chad, like that is wild, man. When you're at the bottom of that list, you are a country that's that, that like democracy should not even be in the word. Democratic should not even be in your name, man. Like it's just it's just crazy how they can even have the audacity to What's do that. What's going to be offended? I can safely say that no one from North Korea is ever going to see this video. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so in sad and messed one, up. Both North and South I wonder if that's changed since, if like people in North Korea are now allowed internet. Because I know there is some slow sort of progress in North Korea, man. In terms of like their leaders are now allowing them to do a few more things. Again, I don't know to what level, but I mean, I hope so. Because again, the families that have been split up because of this, it's just, it's, I can't even imagine, man. It's just so mental. To Korea me. became members of the United Nations, although neither country recognises the other and both consider themselves the legitimate government of all of Korea. The only place oh, where North shit. and South Korean leaders meet is inside the DMZ in a place called the Joint Security Area. The JSA, including the room they meet in, lie directly on the border, which isn't actually a border but an MDL or an armistice line. In fact, the line even passes through the very conference table they sit at. <laughs> so the two what? leaders basically talk to each other from different what countries the fuck? and that is the wild. There's a door to each side of the room which leads back to their own country. What the fuck? Today, North Korea and South Korea are pretty much as different as two countries can be. They mm. both speak Korean and they both have the word Korea in their name, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. South Korea has a free market capitalist economy, while North Korea officially describes itself as a socialist republic. But a more accurate description might be a totalitarian dictatorship. Mm -hmm. So if you're planning on going on holiday to Korea, you're probably better off going to South Korea. <laughs> Quickly, do you want to see the pop um, population of both countries? South Korea. Pop I know South Korea is not poo. <laughs> it's quite high, isn't it? 51 million. God damn. And I know it's quite a small country as well. Um... Twenty-five. Geez, so if they were joined together, that would be a huge nation in terms in terms of population. Fuck. That is mental. I mean, shout out to this guy again. Again, it's an old video. It's like seven years old, but. Actually, it's longer than that. Seven and a half years old. I keep forgetting it's 2021 now. Fucking hell. 
But yeah, I mean, it explained to me, and again, for someone who's not as educated on this kind of topic as they want to be, it does help me learn more about this kind of stuff. And again, like I said, it's a bit of an old video, so possibly a few things here and there aren't correct now and they've changed. But I just hope for the sake of Koreans, man, that the countries can just like sort of come back together eventually because it's just a sad situation. It's as messed up and weird and interesting as it is, it's just a sad situation, man. So basically, Soviets influenced the North, Americans the South, and turned brother against brother. I mean, they they, they split because North Korea fought Coca Cola, tasted better than South Korea like Pepsi. <laughs> People are messed up. Very very similar to the splitting of Germany. That's a good point, actually. The fact that the United States funded terrorism on ourselves is kind of embarrassing. North Korea left because they have no CEO. Huh. You should comment, man. Don't you think the USA is messing with every country for no reason? Both Korea must be reunited, reunited into the United Republic of Korea, just like Germany. I hope so, man. About the last part, yeah, you're better off going to South Korea unless you're Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman's got such a weird association with that country, man. It's so strange to me. The US effectively funded terrorism against themselves. I know it shouldn't be, but that was really funny. South Korea best. Imagine if there's any North Koreans watching this. Actual Korean War is 1950 present, no peace treaty was signed. Interesting video, man. Again, like I say this all the time, but I do enjoy these sort of reactions, just learning about historical events and things that are still affecting the world today. Because I know North Korea is one of those countries that, again, maybe it's changed in the past few years, but still is like a country that's. They're threatening to do a lot of things, aren't they? Like nuclear war, like wars of the US, especially, and all these things. They say that, but they don't actually do it. So it's kind of strange, but. Yeah, so the weird one, because it's just crazy how two countries that are effectively just one country are so, so different. It's just messed up, man. It's wild, but that's just a world for you, man. People are... The human species is just messed up. It really fucking is, but again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. More of this stuff in future, and until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.